Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In a future DCS World update, we'll be adding the high-speed anti-radiation missile or HARM for the S-16. This missile homes in on the radar emissions of air defense radars and is an important tool in suppression of enemy air defenses or SEED role. We'll first release it in HARM sensor or HAS mode and we'll later add position and HAD slash HTS modes. For HAS, it uses the sensor in the nose of the missile to detect and track detected radars that are in one of the three threat tables. Once the threat is handed off to the missile and the missile is launched, it will fly directly to the target with no range data. As such, it has more limited range than other modes. The S-16 can only carry two harms, so make them count. Let's get started. Okay, so before we jump into the mission, let's take a look at some of the controls we're going to be using. So we have selected the F-16C SIM. In the category, let's first go to Axis Commands. And to slew the cursor, we're going to be using the radar cursor switch X-axis and radar cursor switch Y-axis. And then to the HOTAS category, the big ones are going to be the Display management switch down, left, right, and up. You'll hear me refer to this as DEMIS. And then coming down, we have the target management switch for down, left, right, and up. And you'll hear me refer to this as TEMIS. Okay, let's take a look at this in the mission. Alrighty, so let's take a look at using the harm in HAS mode in the Viper. First thing we'll do is we'll go to air to ground mode. And because we only have harms loaded as our air to ground weapon, it automatically is brought up on the storage management system. Uh, we see again, we're in air to ground mode. In inventory, we can see what's on the jet. We have two AGM 88s. We'll go ahead and power these on manually. And we can see we have harms on station three and station seven. Uh, the box around the three indicates that that station is in priority. But if we want, we can switch that to station seven by pressing the missile step button on the control stick. Let's take a look at the HSD, and we can see that our targets for the day are an SA-11 site on Greater Two Island and an SA-15 on Lesser Two Island. On the left side, let's bring up the weapon page for the harm in HAS mode, and we'll go Demos half short to make this soy. And there's a bit to talk about here, so let's go ahead and uh, pause this for a minute. Now, the first thing to uh, understand about the harm in HAS mode is that it's not exactly the brightest bulb in the pack in that they can only detect up to five different radar types at once but you can have up to three tables so uh, each table having up to five radars you can actually in your program up to uh, 15 radars possibly to search so in this case in table one i have a combination of sa-10 and sa-11 radars uh, the first top three are sa-10 the bottom three are sa-11 but the table two, I can either press the OSB or I can go team of left short. And here we have more shorter range systems like a SA-19 or a 2S6, an SA-15, an SA-8, and so on. And we go to the third table now, we have older systems like an SA-3, an SA-6, and an SA-2. But let's say you're gonna fly a mission and you're only worried about two different types of radar, but uh, by default, they're on two different tables, but you want them on a single table. So you are in luck. So you can actually go to the DED and the ICP to make your own tables. So we can go to list, miscellaneous zero, harm zero. And here we have your tables in each table with the five different radar types. But you note that they're actually different codes rather than something like 3S62. Uh, what I'll do is in the text of the description, I'll list the codes for you. So using these codes and the uh, DED capability, you can actually go ahead and program your own tables to suit your mission. Stop her back out of that. Now, when the Harmon is in HAS mode, its uh, sole uh, search is focused on the bore side of where that missile is pointed. So anything on display, which would be within the red dashed area here, uh, on the right side would be off to the right of the bore side of that missile and so on. 
And when the missile is in search mode, it's not the most efficient uh, by default. It's going to search for every radar in the table based on the uh, search pattern. So in this case, by default, it's going to be searching for five different radars in a wide area. And if we do the um, uh, reset search, the RS button, we can see it's going to take a minute and 30 seconds to complete one complete search. So 90 seconds is quite a long time. But we can actually pare that down pretty quickly. By going first to the search function here, we can remove uh, radars that we're not interested in searching for. So in this case, uh, let's go get uh, rid of all but two and come back, restart it again, and now we're down to just 35 seconds. Uh, next, right now we're in a wide search, so if you don't have a really good idea where that radar is, wide's a good idea. But if you have a good raw hit or good intelligence, you could go to a center scan. And it's just going to be uh, searching for the very center of the uh, uh, cross here for targets. And we we'll restart it again, we're down to just 8 seconds, so much, much better. Let's go back to table 1 for the SA-11. And let's get rid of those SA-10 radars we're not going to need. Come back. We're in a center scan. Uh, the SCT value, right now it's 13. That indicates that the uh, search has been restarted 13 times, whether it's a completed pattern or me changing tables or so on. And we have first contact now. We have SDA. That indicates uh, snow drift in active mode, A for active. If it's a T after it, it means that it is in uh, tracking mode. And there's a good chance there's a missile on the way, or there will be shortly. We can display up to 10 different emitters within the uh, box. But if it's up to 10, only two of those can be of the same radar type. And also, when you have a SAM site with multiple radars, they'll be overlapping initially. But the radar in priority, which will generally be the engagement radar, will take precedence, and the other ones will disappear to give you a clean look at the engagement radar. Uh, to lock up a radar, we'll be using the uh, slew cursor here. We just place it over the emitter and go team is forward short to hand it off. Uh, to do the harm for engagement. At this point, I think we can go ahead and unpause. And up on the HUD, we can see that we have uh, harm, uh, the status box of the missile shot. We also have a box here on the weapon page indicating the current radar types being detected. Right now, just a snow drift out there. Okay, 11 has popped up on the raw gear. And you see some overlapping there. And the snow drift went away. Now we just have an 11. In active mode, we're going to wait for transition to a tracking mode. And I place the cursor over it. Okay, went to T, T was forward short, and Magnum. That's so why it's a good idea to have the HSD to give you a better situational awareness where that SAM site is, as well as your raw gear, of course. At this point, let's go ahead and change it to the uh, Table 2 with the SA-15. Let's get rid of the radars we don't need. center scan. So now we're set up for the SA-15 attack. Okay, let's pitch back in. Okay, SA-11 is offline. Get the 15 here. 
good. Lock him up now. Magnum. And now the uh, SA-15 is offline. So, two shots, two hits. So folks, this is a uh, overview of using the Harman HAS mode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Thanks.